Welcome friends, James Corbett here from FukushimaUpdate.com with your latest updates for day 231 of the ongoing nuclear crisis, aka the 27th of October 2011, and I'm coming to you on at 12.30 p.m. Japanese Standard Time, so let's get straight into today's updates. And we'll start with a press release from the National Nuclear Security Administration, which has just put out some raw data from its radiation monitoring efforts in Japan. And uh, you can go and look at all of their different air samples and soil samples and maps, etc. Some good raw data for the researchers out there who are interested. And of course, as always, there's a link to click back to the original if you want to go and see their actual page. But there's really no need to do that. But if you want to, it's there. Um, let's get into some of today's other updates. Uh, this one and the previous one, both of them come from a listener and viewer and uh, reader, uh, Ian Goddard. So thank, thank you to him for those uh, tips. This one, radiation exposure to the population in Japan after the earthquake. And as near as I can tell, this is an abstract of a paper that's going to be delivered at the Health Healthy Communities Promote Healthy Minds and Bodies, the annual meeting and exposition of the APHA, which is going to be taking place in Washington uh, this coming weekend. So um, on Monday, October 31st, Marco Kaltoven is going to be presenting this on uh, uh, radiation exposure to the Japanese population. There's a bit of an abstract here talking about uh, the samples that have been collected from used air filters and people's shoes and things like that, showing that there are high levels of various substances, including, of course, cesium-134, 137, and cobalt-60. And as a related uh, bonus, I guess, a uh, bonus piece of information, who is Marco Keltoven? Well, he was actually interviewed by uh, Maggie Gunderson of Fairwinds Associates earlier this year, so I've included the link to that video, so you can go and watch that video to find out more about Marco Keltoven. Um, and... After that, we have the video from yesterday, of course, but, but I don't need to show you that. And the updates for today, day 231. Uh, we've highlighted uh, an article from informable.com that picks up on a Japan Times story that we're going to be looking at later. But uh, this um, informable.com story starts by quoting the Japan Times article. Masato Muto works for Tokyo Electric Power Co. in a rented one-story building in Fukushima Prefecture, where only a clock and a calendar hang on the office walls, and most days only angry people come through the front door. The nuclear evacuees who visit TEPCO's branch office in the mountainside town of Aizu Wakamatsu are greeted two ways. First, by a letter from the utility's president taped to a whiteboard by the entrance that apologizes for the great inconvenience and anxiety caused by the accident. Next, by an employee such as Muto, one of the 1,700 TEPCO workers dis dispatched to centers in Fukushima to help people collect payments for their lost jobs and homes, provided they first fill out the 60-page application form. The people who come here are furious, furious about what happened, Muto said. They have a thorn stuck in their heart. A lot of people tell me, I want to go home as soon as possible. I want my life back. What can I do? Well, the best way to help is to let them vent their anger. So Muto bows to their evacuees, dropping to his knees and apologizing. This is the first step for us, to then have a conversation about compensation. My longest session was four hours, Muto said. Woo, I was so tired afterward. I thought this was an important article to highlight because it says a lot of things about Japanese culture and about the way that they deal with a lot of different problems, not just uh, the Fukushima crisis. And it's also interesting for what it reveals that might be different about this crisis. Um, I think it's quite quite Japanese to have a, a sign apologizing for the great inconvenience and having workers bowing, dropping to their knees, apologizing, and then having four-hour conversations about comp compensation when 60-page forms. All of that is, I think, very much indicative of the type of Japanese bureaucracy and the, the way that things are run here. But uh, particularly particularly interesting that people are really furious about what's happened and are are really starting to take TEPCO to task at least a little bit. And um, it's important when this is highlighted in the media to, that we rebroadcast that because I think it's important to make sure the people are aware that the people in Fukushima aren't going to take this lying down. And uh, it's an interesting story at any rate. Other uh, headlines from Informable, uh, Tokyo ignored calls to issue iodine during crisis and thus increased uh, exposure to radiation and the possible effects. Uh, new research identifies Japan's elevated risk from tsunamis, talking about the possibility of a, um, a series of earthquakes um, along a certain fault that would it, uh, make basically 20 meter um, tsunami waves in Kochi Prefecture, 15 meters in Shizuoka. 
Uh, Japanese officials deny newer radiation readings and effects. Uh, TEPCO admits operator manuals based on unrealistic conditions still denies culpability. I was talking about those manuals that we've been talking about the last couple days that TEPCO released that basically show that they weren't ready for the uh, type of thing, the exact type of uh, situation that happened at Fukushima. Uh, the funeral company, TEPCO set a new low for corporate behavior, and that uh, again picks up from that Japan Times article. Uh, J Council members from Organization to Eliminate Nuclear Energy in Japan, so this is about uh, some Japanese uh, government councillors who have formed a bipartisan organization to try to stop uh, nuclear energy. Um, 100, 112 becquerels per kilogram concentration uranium found in the soil of Aizu Wakamatsu, which is just a couple hundred kilometers from Fukushima. Uh, 64 tons of radioactive water leakage reported at Tokai number no. 2. Very interesting story and one uh, that will keep that number in not mind. 64 tons from Tokai number no. 2. Uh, latest headlines from FukushimaDiary.com. 12,390 becquerels of kilogram from refuse incineration ash every day. So releasing more radioactive contaminants into the atmosphere by burning the radioactive materials. Uh, what a wonderful idea that is. Uh, column, from <clears throat> column from one of our correspondence and if we click through to that it's someone who's in, in Yokohama reporting on on various things uh, related to that including the strontium and uh, food contamination a pretty interesting article it's been translated into English and uh, Japanese from I believe the original German so worth checking out um, again uranium from in the soil at Aizu Wakamatsu Wakazumi well okay uh, slaughter in Minami Soma talking again about the effects in that uh, town uh, in Fukushima Prefecture. Uh, latest headlines from enenews.com. Radioactive leak from reactor pressure, pressure vessel at Tokai Nuke Plant. So again, talking about the Tokai uh, leak. Uh, Fukushima engineer, if people think nuclear power is safe, I'd like them to work with me for a day. Uh, picking up on a BBC video also included there. So I hope people will check, click through and check that out. A new study finding radioactive thorium detected 100 kilometers from Fukushima meltdowns and thorium being a uh, daughter component of uranium from what I understand. Uh, uranium breaks down into thorium. So daughter products of uranium. So again, interesting and it's got a lot of uh, information here. So I hope you click through and find out more about that. Uh, Daiichi Elementary, 4 million becquerels per square meter of cesium in soil samples. Uh, top U.S. nuclear official bursts into laughter after question on Fukushima worker deaths. <laughs> because it's so funny to think, of, oh, you, what, are you asking if people have died from this? <laughs> uh, CNN, uh, why tourism in Fukushima makes more sense than ever. Mm, wow, some nice free promotion for the Japanese government from CNN. I wonder why they do that. Um, latest headlines from Japanese media. Tokai number two leaks 22 tons of water from the Japan Times. Informable 64 tons of water. Hmm, well, interesting discrepancy. I wonder uh, what's going on. TEPCO staff on front lines feel victims' anger from Japan Times. Again, that's the uh, the article that this uh, informable uh, article picked up on. Water leaks out of Tokai nuclear reactor from Japan today. More on that uh, leak. Kansai Electric to submit stress test result uh, from NHK. Again, Kansai Electric, we've been talking about recently about some of their shenanigans going on, doctoring emails and um, stacking co uh, press conferences and the like to try to make them seem that they're more stable than they really are. Uh, food safety fair features uh, radiation monitors. Well, that only makes sense, I think, in this day and age. And finally, from Mainichi Daily News, TEPCO revises compensation criteria for tourism business. And then latest headlines from around the web, um, new decontamination experiment in Itatemura, uh, burn the radioactive soil. Hey, sounds great. Eh? Even more into the atmosphere. What a wonderful idea. Uh, Fukushima plant may have emitted double radiation than estimated from Bloomberg. That Again, picking up on that, uh, those, that study that we uh, published, I believe, yesterday, two days ago on Fukushima Update, and we've published some of the articles about that. There's another one, and there's quite a few around the web, web making its way around the web now, um, as, of course, you get the first information from sites like Fukushima Update, and eventually it'll filter down to um, sites like Bloomberg. Uh, CanadianBusiness.com, Connecticut nuclear plant views safety after Japan quake. Uh, Xinhua reporting on the leak at the Tokai um, plant. Fox News reporting on what we were reporting on the other day, radioactive used cars being sold illegally in Japan. 
Uh, New York Times has an interesting one. Japan gets electricity wake up call talking about how so many people were converted over to uh, to all electricity homes uh, just a few years ago in a let's go electric campaign drive by Tokyo Electric Power. Um, and now they're regretting it because, of course, uh, Tokyo's had rolling blackouts and the like. So an interesting article about what uh, what this means for average citizens in terms of their electricity use. And then a bunch of things that show that what this is really about and why why we're probably never likely to get the full truth from, from official sources because of the, uh, the business um, side of things. And so much is at stake in terms of the business. Uh, TEPCO to post $7.6 billion parent lo- net loss in 2011-2012. Uh, EU energy supply at risk after Fukushima, says Reuters. Uh, Business Week, ditching EU atomic pro- project after Japan may strand $2 billion. The business of nuclear power. Business Week also reporting uranium deal deals prove most lucrative on nuclear demand. A very interesting article that shows that there was, of course, a precipitous drop in uranium prices after the Fukushima disaster, as obviously the nuclear power industry was affected, and everyone knew that there was going to be decreasing demand for nuclear power, but now that there's, uh, I believe this article says 135 nuclear plants planned in, uh, ch- uh, sorry, 100, 125, uh, I saw a different number earlier, uh, planned in Russia and China and India, um, still planned in Russia and China, India, even in the wake of the Fukushima disaster. And uh, so because of that demand, uranium prices are going back up and in fact are, are starting to really spike. So uranium still good business to be in, I suppose, uranium mining. So that is the updates for today, at least so far today. And as I say, it's about 12.30 p.m. here in Japan. So I'm sure there will be more coming out later. But as always, I appreciate your tips and links through the contact form, and I appreciate your support.